Hi, and welcome to Ginge Under the Sea for another conservation talk. Thank you so much for joining. I hope you're all well. Today, we're going to be talking about the global fishing industry. It's going to be a short and sweet talk today. I'm not going to go into any details about bycatch or about fishing methods. All we're going to do is we're going to look at the fishing industry on a global scale, what trends we've seen over the last 70 odd years, and also what we can do to reduce our impact on the oceans and help protect something that we all love. So let's dive straight in. So first of all, the fishing industry became industrialized in the early 20th century because of changing materials, allowing nets and lines to be bigger and stronger, allowing for a much larger catch for each boat. Also the advent of refrigeration on ships allowed ships to keep their catch much fresher so they could stay out to sea for much longer periods of time. And also technology and power of boats meant that fishing ships could go much, much further out to sea into the open ocean and and fish much deeper in the ocean as well, which means that previously inaccessible parts of the ocean are now open and freely accessible to human exploitation and impacts. So with these industrial changes to fishing techniques and fishing methods, the global catch increased massively over the last 70 years. If we go back to 1950s, we see the global catch was around 20 million tons every year. We fast forward just 40 years to the 1990s, that global catch has increased fourfold up to around an over 80 million tons every single year. But since the 1990s, the global fish catch has actually stabilized and hasn't increased much over the last 30 years. Now this isn't due to a reduction in fishing effort or definitely not a reduction in demand for seafood, but in fact, we have reached a ceiling of how many fish we can remove from the ocean there just aren't enough fish in the ocean to maintain this increase that we saw between the 50s and the 90s. And as you'll see from this second graph here, you can see that the amount of fisheries that are overexploited or overfished, which means that they are fished in a way that means that fishery will collapse in the near future, has risen dramatically over the last 35 years from the mid 70s, where only about 5% of the fisheries were overexploited to the last few years where it's thought that up to 35% of the fisheries around the globe are overexploited, which means that they are in decline and will cause a collapse of the fishery and also possibly the ecosystem in the near future. And on top of that, we can see from this graph that 95% of all fisheries are in fact maximally fished or overfished. This leaves just 5% of fish stocks around the world that are underfished and not under a huge amount of strain to maintain their numbers. We must realize that the demand for seafood around the world is not sustainable. And if we continue fishing the oceans as we are, fish stocks will continue to decline and we will be looking at empty oceans in the near future. To put this in perspective, it is thought that in the last 100 years, 90% of the large fish in our oceans, so the tuna, the swordfish, the sharks, the large predatory fish in the ocean, are now gone, 90% in just 100 years. And this is not sustainable. So we must start considering the impact of putting wild caught animals on our plates. So to stop this decline in our fisheries and this emptying of the oceans, we must start considering how we as individuals can have a more positive impact on the ocean. And the biggest thing that each individual can do is reduce or completely remove their seafood from their diet. This will reduce the stress and the strain on the oceans as the fishing efforts can be reduced with a reduced demand. There are so many more factors that we could talk about when it comes to fisheries and the ocean ecosystems, and I will be covering them in later videos. But for today, I want to keep it really short and sweet, give you just a quick snapshot of the global fisheries industry at the moment and the health of our oceans, and give you a quick action that you can start doing from today that can start to improve your impact on the oceans. So the figures and graphs from today's talk was sourced from the FAO's Guide to the State of World fisheries and aquaculture, which was released just weeks ago. I will put a link to it down below if you want to read the whole document. It's very long, but has a lot of great information, giving you a real good idea of the global uh, fisheries industry and aquaculture as well. 
So I really hope you enjoyed today's talk. If you got some value from this video, then please give it a like and don't forget to click the subscribe button to continue learning about sharks and marine conservation and fishing industries. And don't forget to check out my T-Mail store, which is full of sustainably sourced ocean and shark themed clothing. I'll put a link in the description below. But again, I really hope you guys enjoyed today's talk and got some value from it. Don't forget to click the subscribe button and I'll see you in the next one.